Seeing and understanding how bass hit our lures can make us better anglers and also have a deeper understanding of why our equipment is made the way it is. There are basically two ways in which bass will attack their prey or our lures. Let's go ahead and break down each. Many bottom bouncing baits get this vacuum or suction type of attack by bass, but it can also apply to things like a drop shot rig, because remember, it's based on not where the lure is in the water column, but based on the speed of the prey or the speed of the lure, and then the bass adjusts from there. In this vacuum or suction approach, the bass will often approach their prey or approach the lure cautiously, and they will often pause just for a split second right before they attack. Then they will flare their gills, and this is what creates that suction where it pulls in that prey, pulls in that lure. It's then at this point where that bass instinctually makes a split second decision to either continue to eat that prey or spit it back out. It is this type of attack by the bass, this suction or vacuuming action that gives us as anglers that traditional thump, that thumping type of a bite. We're bringing a jig across the bottom and we feel that thump. It is often with this type of bite where we are best served as anglers by waiting just a second before we set the hook because the fish will reposition that lure or their prey multiple times. Now let's talk about the second type of attack. This is where the bass uses its own body speed, its inertia, its force to go ahead and direct a body blow to the prey that it is attacking. And their goal usually is a direct center of mass hit. Let's take a look at this raid swimmer coming through the water column. Now it's moving steadily, it's swimming along, but it is not moving quickly through the water column like something, let's say, burning a square bill. But this bass right here adjusts its speed accordingly. And then what I find super interesting is that it swims slightly past the lure and then makes a sharp 90 degree turn and directs that perfect center of mass body blow. These are the types of bites where we feel the rod just load up, or if we're really lucky, these are the types of lures that get those arm ripping strikes. Now, many of you are probably wondering about what about these reaction type bites? And the interesting thing is the fish can react to both slow moving prey or slow moving lures and fast moving. Let's take a look at this example right here. So we've got a small bass in frame here and it sees this tube falling through the water column and right away it notices it and comes to investigate it. That part of its brain that is thinking, hey, this could possibly be food or let's see what's going on here has been activated when it saw that tube falling through the water column. Now the tube basically disappears in the vegetation, but when I rip it out, this bass just reacts to it. It immediately turns and attacks this tube and is caught. The same type of thing can happen with faster moving baits, but the key reason that this reaction bite worked right here is the instincts of the fish were already in play. They were triggered, they were activated, it was curious, it was coming to see what was going on when that tube fell right there near it. I could do the same type of lure ripping off the bottom action by some other bass, and they completely ignore it, or even worse, it scares them off. So to get these reaction bites, we've gotta have multiple factors that are working at the same time. And before we get into equipment, why it is designed the way it is and the best choices for each type of bite for my Bass Behavior Bundle members, I got three new videos, should be out in the next couple days, including topics like bass and smell and also vibration detection. Plus we just had our first live stream, really looking forward to the next one, links down below. So what about our equipment and specifically our rod choice? As a rule of thumb for lures that have more speed to them coming up through the water column, we want a rod that has a medium or a moderately fast action. In other words, we want 
the rod tip to have a little flex to it before it gets to the backbone of the rod. And you may be asking, well, what does that specifically do? Well, remember in those faster moving lures, the bass is adjusting its attack speed. In other words, when it has that direct center of body mass blow to it, it has energy inertia that it is hitting the lure with, and it is helping to set the hook on itself, especially with something like razor sharp treble hooks. So if we have a rod that gets to the backbone too quickly and we as anglers react quickly to it, we run the risk of pulling that lure away from them or ripping those trebles free. Now, when we have got lures that are moving slower, when that bass comes up and use that vacuum or that suction type of attack to it, when we feel that thump, that lure could be sitting just inside of the bass's mouth with that hook not doing anything. That is where we want a rod that has a faster action, gets to the backbone quicker because we have to impart the pressure, we have to impart the power to get that hook set. And hey, if you wanna watch a video that talks about lure flash or blade flash and what it may or may not be doing, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.